Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Dark Dance for the Renaissance channel. I'm your host, Ego. And I have with me Baruti. How are you doing, Baruti? Hello, how are you? Good to be with you today. Good to be with you as well. Um, glad to have you around and thank you for those who are going to be watching. Um, please remember to subscribe, um, watch, click, share, and also ask any questions as you see foot. Uh, so I'm just getting the video settings correct. Okay. Um, today's uh, discussion is about a term called Mbongi. Uh, the title is Mbongi, a Pan African think tank. So Mbongi is M B O N G I. Um, it's a Kikongo word. Um, and it's a it's an old word. It's a word that describes um, a kind of. Uh, I mean, the, the definition means a learning place, and some other definitions are common shelter. Um, so it is a system, an African system, an institution, a political African institution. You could describe it as, whereby people uh, come together to. Um, intellectually uh, resolve, discuss, strategize on different issues uh, of development uh, and not, notwithstanding any other things that might be facing a particular community. Um, it is not necessarily uh, practiced in a particular type of setting. Uh, and Bongi can be characterized as what happens or what takes place in a hair salon to a university to uh, a group in a particular building, as long as the particular parameters are in place, um, which is why uh, it is significant to call it a think tank, um, a Pan-African think tank that is, has existed for a while. And Mbongi is something that um, we wanted to discuss to bring to the fore of an existing um, um, system in place, a traditional system, for helping to um, utilize intellectual capacity uh, in order to be able to resolve our issues in a very systematic, uh, traditional, and African way. So before I continue, I'd like to play a little video um, for you of Mbongi in action, uh, so you can get a sense and idea of what we're speaking about. So bear with me. The purpose of the Mbangi, or think tank, was to attempt to develop an understanding of the big picture of the condition of education and socialization for people of African ancestry worldwide. Traditionally, responses to these problems have been fragmentary and episodic. A good teacher here, a good program there, a special school achievement there may be exposed and noted. However, we witnessed no fourth forceful action with the power to transform the African community's experience in any substantial way. As a result, there has been a need for a broader look that does not get bogged down in typical dialogue on, quote, school reform, unquote, a dialogue which rarely, if ever, has collected the requisite information and focused priority attention on the condition of African people. The proposal to the Kellogg Foundation indicated that we would. OK, just to stop it there. Um, so this is just to the panel to just give you an idea that these are people. And I'm, I must quote this is a, a video by Dr. Asher Hillard uh, from the United States, a well-renowned um, um, scholar. Uh, on, on, on issues with, with regarding Pan-Africanism. Um, and this was held at the Atlanta University Center some time ago. Um, also a Dr. Fukiao, who I think introduced the term to Dr. Esha Hillard. And you can find him online as well. Dr. Fukiao is from Congo, if, I, if I'm correct. 
Um, so this panel the room, this gives you an idea that people in the room here from different walks of life, different specialities and disciplines who come together to give different perspectives on a particular problem uh, in trying to resolve it and how, why it's so pertinent to it, uh, a Pan-African think tank is uh, this also can be now transposed onto modern day with the issues we face on the continent with people coming from different countries, also different backgrounds, uh, to resolve the wider issues that faces Africa as a whole, and for us to try to inculcate uh, more Mbongi uh, systems like this across the continent in helping to resolve our issues instead of trying to resolve them on a national basis and sometimes even on a, uh, a more uh, on a smaller basis than national or semi-regional but rather to inculcate a an African-centered Mbongi to resolve our issues um, holistically and and unilaterally at the same time to re to bring about a more of a lasting uh, developmental uh, state. So, um, with that being said, I'll stop the video and get back. So, um, with that being said, uh, Baruti, I wanted to ask you about um, what your thoughts are on Bongi, the, the term, uh, if you know about its origins as well, or uh, any kind of um, implications of, of Bongi historically and its potential implementation in the future. Uh, so, what are your thoughts? Well, um, thanks for that. That introduction of the uh, video. What we were seeing was a um, was a brief uh, video clip from a 1998 uh, convening of a conference that, as you mentioned, Dr. Asa Hilliard was having. And uh, let me just say, unfortunately, Dr. Asa Hilliard is no longer with us. He, he died a few years ago while in Egypt. He had contracted um, malaria and died from some associated uh, complications. But um, Dr. Asa Hid, you know, in, in reading some of his work and actually seeing some, some videos via YouTube, you know, Dr. Hid was, uh, you know, an Afrocentric educator and also was um, a specialist in the uh, history of, of ancient Kemet. And so his work was uh, very profound. And what was interesting is that he mentioned Mbongi as a think tank. And I wanted to just kind of throw some ideas on that uh, subject. The word Mbongi, as you, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Uh, Asa he had coined it as being a think tank. But you mentioned another person, his name was Dr. Fukiao. In fact, uh, Dr. Fukiao's first name is uh, Keyboard and Dende Fukiao. As you correctly mentioned, he, um, he was a scholar from uh, the Congo, a researcher, in, particularly in political thought uh, and analysis. And he wrote a book called Mbangi in which he outlined, you know, an African system of community gathering in which uh, political problems, community problems could be discussed in an open, in an open forum. He had defined in his book Mbangi that Mbangi, he crystallized it as what he called a community parliament, as I said, where People in the villages could come together and could have an open dialogue about uh, various problems in the community, ideas about conflict management, and uh, also how to structure uh, their particular societies uh, politically, uh, where you could cut down on all kinds of political problems, and also a tool that could be used you know, between villages in ancient times to, um, you know, to come to some type of political uh, understandings. Now, if we go back to, you know, the word itself, uh, Mbangi, uh, it is a word from the language 
called Kikongo. And then, and you know, let's spell that, Kikongo, K-I-K-O-N-G-O. So anytime we see the word Congo spelled with a K, we know, we know that we're talking about a, a large ancient region in Africa that defines the present day uh, land space of the countries of Gabon, the Republic of Congo, the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, uh, and Angola. So those four countries uh, comprise what we knew as the, the kingdom or territory of Congo spelled with a K. So the language Kikongo was spoken all over, and still is, all over uh, these these regions that comprise these four present day countries. But the word Mbangi, uh, literally from its uh, meaning, is a is a is a room with no walls. And so the connotation of that is a place where people would be gathered in which there is no secrecy in the exchange of ideas. So basically a place where all people in a given space are hearing the ideas of others and are sharing them interactively for the purpose of um, discussion and building consensus. So I think from that definition, you know, we have a framework to talk about Mbangi. Let me also say that um, Mbangi, as Dr. Fukial was talking about, was both a philosophical concept about building um, community consensus around issues, particularly political ones and community ones, uh, as well as it represent a physical meeting place. And a lot of times those physical meeting places um, were depicted by the, um, the round circular um, dwelling spaces you know, that epitomize, you know, African architecture or Bantu type architecture where people would meet to actually, you know, discuss community issues in an open forum, you know, type environment. Uh, so from what Dr. Fukial had described as a community parliament and from the definition I gave of the word Mbangi, I think Dr. Asa Hayat conceptualized what Dr. Fukial was saying in another slant to talk about it being a think tank. And so that video that we saw crystallized this notion about the think tank. And in the, in the video, uh, which is longer, of course, than the clip that you showed, um, certainly showed people gathering. In this particular case, it was an educational uh, conference to talk about Afrocentric education or the needs of uh, how, how education should be articulated uh, for African people living in the diaspora and on the continent. And from the context, as I saw from the video in its entirety, uh, many Afrocentric educators uh, from different uh, perspectives, different uh, African ethnic backgrounds were there to convene. And so it had to be a session in which people talked about ideas, they had to be respectful for people's ideas. And as the, the video unfolded, you can see where people were getting together and trying to come up with ideas on whatever problems and discussion items they were dealing with within education. But there were times in which you could see there was a person who acted as a scribe to take down people's ideas so that everybody's ideas were respected, were discussed. And then the idea was at the end of the day, some type of um, team building as well as consensus building around um, the issues on which they were talking about at the, at the conference. So let me just stop there for a minute and we can get into some other some other aspects. Okay, thank, thank you for that very much. Um, I, I had a question. So uh, what would be the 
I guess, unique, I guess, defining features of, of Mbongi as opposed to just being part of a, or what would be its defining structure as opposed to when compared with uh, just a normal meeting, say, for instance, that people have to try to discuss a particular issue. Are there any particular structures it takes or format in which Mbongi is quite uh, unique? Okay, well, well from, from my, um you know, understanding of Mbangi, the, the whole idea is to build consensus. You know, a meeting in which you have various participants, but the idea is the way that the meeting is organized, uh, it's organized from the framework that you want to respect other people's ideas, you want to gather information, make everyone feel, you know, important. So obviously there are different ways that the meeting can be held, but the end goal is to, um, build consensus, create team building, uh, so that you can move forward with a level of interface, respect, and um, camaraderie uh, amongst participants. And I think that what has been valuable here is, is for Dr. Hilliard to take the information or the, or the word introduction that Dr. Fukuyao, I think, kind of introduced into the lexicon of a lot of people using the term Mbangi to mean the community parliament for um, Dr. Hilliard to move the word forward to conceptualize it, as, conceptualize it as a think tank so that it becomes you know, a practical word in our lexicon to talk about a think tank and because of the African nature of the word in itself lends it to being conceptualized in an African standpoint. So that when we say a think tank, in parentheses in front of think tank, it would be African or Pan-African. And I'm saying African or Bantu in the sense that we know that it is usually surrounding African people in this sense from that type of construction, but we might be able to expand it conceptually to talk about a pan-African think tank in the sense that a lot of times to build consensus amongst our people, which we know that they're gonna come from different, uh, perhaps different ethnic backgrounds, different parts of the world, different perspectives in general, it's gonna be diverse. So by nature of the diversity, I think that would be Pan-African in general. And then to put us in a space in which we're talking to each other, interfacing with each other, with the express purpose of whatever the topic is, not just education in, you know, in the sense of the particular conference that Dr. Hill was convening, but we can talk about any particular subjects that are wide ranging or from people from different backgrounds to discuss, but with the sole purpose of building that type of consensus and networking where we know that the spirit is welcoming and that everybody's idea is going to be respected and given some, some due uh, regarding the, the content and analysis of what they bring to the table that would have a level of richness to it uh, as part of the the structure. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, the, the part I wanted to pick up on was the, the consensus. Because I know um, in uh, African cultures of, of time, time gone by, um, such parliaments would only, uh, reaching a consensus would mean a total uh, consensus across the board. Uh, there wouldn't be one person who would be having a differing view, um, as was said. So does Mbongi still uh, embody this principle in that the consensus does mean everybody being on board with the same uh, final outcome? Well, I think that we can you know, modernize or expand those ideas that I think Again, you know, 
the meaning of the word Mbangi from its Kikongo linguistic origins essentially means a house without rooms. Okay, so from that, a house without rooms, you know, we can do some interpretive translations as in a place or a space where all people are engaging in ideas or exchange and discussion, but um, everybody is sort of privy to what's going on, so the ideas are heard by all. Now, if the notion that you brought up, that consensus means that everybody agrees on all points, we can probably modify that so that we're talking about at least building strength upon common ideas that people are comfortable with in general to sort of move move forward with. You know, knowing that everybody may not agree on all things, but do we have enough of a platform or discussion points that people can agree on that's good enough in that context to move forward with an agenda? Okay. Knowing that people may may differ. In fact, you know, sometimes people hearing some of the ideas of other people would cause them to um, maybe reflect or make modifications on some of the ideas they may have. And um, maybe the, the constant interaction and discussion may bring about um, some synthesis, you know, in people's perspectives. So I think those things are important as a vehicle for just kind of moving moving forward of interface and at least um, to have some levels of agreement by which you can build a foundation for, uh, for moving forward. Okay, thank you. I mean, from, from the descriptions um, you give, it sounds like it's it's been a kind of focus from a community perspective uh, to begin with. And now we're talking about extrapolating that to kind of an African perspective. I mean, do you see that that's possible, being that something that happens on a community level um, where it's been people in the community coming together to try to resolve a particular issue that is uh, relative to them? Um, how do we now carry that uh, or extrapolate it or modify it to now go to a wider audience or to incorporate other groups who may have differing views? Okay, well, you see, again, in the context, the ancient context, regarding a community, a community seems like a large group of people, but, you know, for our needs, we might have three or four people who are, who are talking, who are coming together. It might be an organization, it might be five people uh, who are having different uh, perspectives on on a particular subject. So it need not necessarily be an entire community like that, but it might be suited and customized in a practical way for how we want to move ideas further between groups, between two people, between a small set of people, just with the notion on a practical level that we want to be about dialogue and interface and trying to build consensus. Great, no, I, hear, I hear that. Um, so and those, those are the practical kinds of things, you know, given that what we're always trying to do, I think, is to take from some basic elements of our people's rich culture and tapestry of ideas and philosophies and customize them for optimum use within the modern context in which we live today. Let's see, and um... see, so 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 just on that point, as I as I mentioned earlier, knowing that we knew that the actual word in Bangi means a room, uh, a house without rooms. You know, we could literally think of 
a, a house without rooms, but we know that we have to look at sometimes the meaning, the core meaning of a word as being a metaphor for larger ideas. And those larger ideas allow us to expand, modify, and customize, and sort of reimagine with some level of authenticity of earlier concepts that we now apply for practical use in the world in which we live today. So we know that when we have an Mbangi, that we know that we aren't necessarily going to build a space that has no rooms in it, no compartments. But we know that the larger idea is that we're trying to make sure that everybody's voice is heard by others so that the walls, uh, no walls means that there's no separation within the house, within the confines of the discussion, so that everybody is hearing each other for the point of interface, dialogue, discussion, and respect. So we, at the end of the day, the idea is to try to build upon the strengths of commonality so that if we're in a, a house, a space, a physical dwelling, whatever that physical dwelling is, the idea shared by one is heard by all, discussed by all, as well as respected. Even if people don't agree completely, everybody feels respected and that at the end of the day, can we write down some ideas that we kind of all agree on so that at least from a platform standpoint, we can sort of move forward. Whether it be a conversation between two people, uh, four people meeting, uh, representatives from a few organizations that at least sort of build from a foundation, mutual respect, commonality, trying to build consensus to move forward with an agenda that might translate into our physical action, physical cooperation, uh, depending upon the situation. Well, thank you. Um, when, when I think of all that, I wonder now when I look at, say, for, for instance, the African Union, and if there are actually, if they actually do solicit from um, Mbongi uh, um, outcomes from members of the public in, in such ways, um, suggestions that come from these sorts of forum where people can now uh, condense ideas and bring them forth with, with their, their consensus to places like the African Union. And if they actually do solicit this from people or they only, um, uh, or, or they only focus on the discussion they have in that particular organization. So what I'm trying to find out is your views, I guess, on the inter-organizational um, aspect as well as the international aspect and then inter-community aspect, and which would yield the most dividend if we're trying to get the best solutions. I mean, it might just depend upon the the you know the situation. I mean, communication between two organizations or more than two or internal discussions. Um, if those organizations or those players or actors, you know, are thinking about generally and in Bangi, then. The whole idea is can we build upon the notion that everybody's views are going to be respected with an interface, an interface component that at the end of the day, there are some areas that we might agree on in terms of consensus. I think that's the, the spirit of it. It might take different shapes, you know, it might take different structures, but with that ideological idea in mind, I think that's what I'm talking about 
is good for Mbangi, you know, for for having an Mbangi. With that express purpose, that, that will be the outcome, to develop some levels of consensus using whatever structures are necessary. So various Mbangis might take different shapes. They may look differently, but they may have the same core idea in terms of an outcome. I see. I mean, look, looking at think tanks now, I mean, uh, there are a few that exist around the world and some do exist in Africa. There are less of them that are Pan-African in, in nature or stature. Um, so my, my, my uh, query would be um, Mbongi as a Pan-African think tank, um, would it be best to, you know, act as a consulting type of body, uh, picking on and trying to resolve various issues um, from various countries or societies, or being uh, solicited for solutions and addressing it that way? Is it a continuous process um, whereby the issues are not necessarily always pertinent to um, a particular time or particular society or community? And it's just a continuous process of trying to consolidate um, knowledge and expertise and consensus uh, across the continent. Yes, yes. See, for example, you and I are now engaged in Mbangi. Hmm. Because we are trying to discuss uh, certain issues with questions, counter questions, uh, but with the notion that we are trying to respect each other's viewpoints, um, we may not agree completely in our discussion, for example, or we may agree, but at least we're noting the layers of agreement and perhaps the areas where we may not agree. Now, sometimes in conversations, um, certain points may have to be understood again, or someone may misconstrue what someone is saying. They may have to go back and clarify certain points for greater understanding. That will be all be part of an embongi because we know that any levels of discussion will, you know, will resort to questions, counter questions, um, maybe a restatement of certain things. But the notion that everybody's views are heard by all and are respected with the express point of trying to build some level of consensus of greater understanding. See, the important thing is, is that a lot of times because of, of colonialism, uh, sometimes we don't use some of our resources from our cultural past to help us today. So just talking about an Mbangi in its different customized forms and expanded concepts, we are acting out and speaking through our own narrative just by mentioning the word, just by trying to go back to an African word that had a meaning like a house without rooms, then we might use Dr. Fukial as a resource to read his book, to talk about his analysis on a political level. You know, his, his analysis of the Mbangi was more so talking about community needs on a political level in terms of the hierarchies of authorities and how people would interact with one another in terms of creating policies and how one you know village may communicate with another village for the purpose of security uh, you know it could be re re resolution of land squabbles and other sorts of things so he was talking about it from a political uh, standpoint. So Dr. Fukial, for example, did not um, 
mention the word Mbangi as a think tank. He mentioned Mbangi as a community parliament in his assessment politically of its ancient use, but with the notion that conflict resolution would be part of the of the mix in terms of structure and the idea of networking and sort of building consensus and cooperation. Well, uh, Dr. Hayer took, of course, those ideas and sort of adapted it to what would be the structure of having a conference that would embody some of the same ideas that Dr. Fukiao articulated, but with the notion of bringing educators together to talk about um, African centered education, uh, you know, in general, knowing that there was a wide body of people from diverse backgrounds and academic interests, all within the field of education, but could they bring them together in a particular conference structurally, in which everybody knew their views would be kind of heard, um, they would be respected, maybe their views would be written down. Uh, they could try to come to the conference with the notion that they could interface with others. Maybe there will be some areas of disagreement, but then there'll be areas of consensus. And can they build on the consensus? That's, that was the idea. So we've got all, already, as I've talked about, we've got various interpretations of the Mbanki, but with certain platform uh, commonalities that allow it to be modified in whatever ways that we're talking about. So again, I believe that what we're doing right now is an Mbanki. And I'll get further into its adaptation in the medium that we're using right now, you know, regarding basically Skype or, you know, a type of um, video conferencing. But does that, does that help to clarify what I mean about the practicality and adaptability of just the concept of an Mbangi um, put forth in different types of venues and with, in different types of um, structural configurations. Yeah, yes, it does. It does. Um, I mean, the, the interesting thing is, is um, the, and, and the definition of Mbangi, it would obviously now have a different dimension, being that communication is now done online over vast distances with people from entirely different um, fields of thought, but, but still now aiming for a particular goal, a similar goal, um, which would make the Mbangi much more interesting, much more diverse, and much more compelling. Um, because now it wouldn't be people from a similar community uh, trying to resolve an issue would, would have a lot more shared experiences to deal with. So the Bangi would be different, say, for instance, when you now have to deal with people who, like myself and yourself, who see, might see an issue or problem differently, right or wrong, um, but approach it in a very different way. So it now would have a lot more impetus on the participants of the Bangi to be a lot more uh, accommodating, uh, listening, uh, willing, and um, uh, and uh, in in and tolerant to to different ideas and fields of thought. In fact, it pulls a lot more on the intellect uh, than normal. But at the same time, the benefits can be um, far more uh, impressive because the benefits can now introduce. Uh, solutions that would otherwise not have been able to be sought after uh, within those communities, which obviously uh, portends a very interesting, um, um, interesting outcome. Now, I've got a question for you okay. regarding perhaps a an incorporated layer that I think should be important within the configurations of any types of Mbangi. And that would be an interdisciplinary uh, spirit or component. So why don't you tell me 
if you believe this in general, what is the importance of interdisciplinary research? Why or why not? From that standpoint, would that be important? And what types of dimensions would an Mbangi have with the notion that it should be interdisciplinary as much as possible? I think uh, any interdisciplinary research would give you a well-rounded and comprehensive view and perspective of an issue. Um, and it allow you to look at it multi-dimensionally, um, reviewing aspects that would otherwise not have been um, attended to, and to be able to create longer lasting, more holistic uh, solutions for the future, because you've now taken into account a, a lot more uh, perspectives than, than would otherwise normally have been done. Um, I give a case in point, something like, like Bantu, um understanding bantu civilization and peoples i think if you were to look at uh, holding a bongi for that and to now incorporate uh, into disciplinaries like uh archaeology uh, uh paleontology uh history um, um linguistics uh um looking at all those aspects and then the eth ethno um ethno cultural um aspects with the art as well when you incorporate all of these together, you now have a well-rounded uh, picture of, of a people and how they lived, when they lived in their systems uh, in their particular era and time. So that's just one example. So I think a multidisciplinary approach gives you a well-rounded view, a whole view, more true reflection of what an issue is and best ways to go about uh, dealing with it. So therefore, on what you just said, uh, an interdisciplinary component also brings in a level of what I would call textured or layered richness because you're having many different perspectives um, within the discussion of a particular subject. So that adds to the richness in general. And I think that that's one of the reasons, at least in our day and time today, why. Um, interdisciplinary research is considered so valuable. So that to me um, is another component that I think any type of Mbangi can or should have in general if it's possible to add to the richness. What do you think? I agree. I agree. And um, obviously this, this is something that um, like I said is largely not, not done. The Think tanks um, mainly are, are more of a, either regional at, at best or national, um, dealing with issues on a, on a countrywide basis. Uh, but a Pan African one requires a lot of data, a lot of analysis, uh, a lot of even global um, analysis, um, external and internal, to be able to come to a true um, reflection or situation where you can now. Uh, provide uh, an Mbongi uh, assessment of an issue on the continent, in Africa in particular, as we're discussing. So um, a lot of data needs to be analyzed, a lot of um, people being involved globally and internally, and um, also to be able to create this richness, which you, which you speak of, uh, and a multidisciplinary approach, and to have as wide as possible uh, participants uh, and then obviously to disseminate or reduce or increase as much as you see fit at the first instance. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I agree uh, completely. See, what we want to do, I think, and um, I've been thinking about this, what we want to do is we want to, again, talk from our narrative, but also to use our cultural resources to help define us today. Okay, so when we say cultural resources, as we've talked about before, the seven areas of culture, inclusive in terms of subcategories would be language, uh, you know, history as part of, 
was part of the, the mix of culture and of course a certain uh, perspective slant. Okay. So the mere fact that we are using an African word that we are trying to define and expand and modify conceptually from the base meaning of the word in this particular case in Bangi means that we are talking from our own narrative and using an African word concept from an African language as a resource base that is a part of you know a powerful narrative so i have for example seen a few instances via the internet where people are talking about mbangi and having an mbangi so that now that dr pay particularly um, had tried to popularize the term mbangi in reference to having a conference that would be an African-centered conference, basically. Other people have now started using the term Mbangi as a think tank, okay? What they said, a convening or a conference. And I think that's directly attributable to what Dr. Hilliard you know, had done. We just need to continue to expand that so that anytime someone says Mbangi, they would know that means a, a think tank or an Afrocentric conference convening with the parameters that we are talking about in our session here today, but to basically make that a part of our lexicon so that we know that someone says, okay, uh, why don't we come up with an Mbangi? Everybody knows that's going to be a think tank. You see what I mean? So we're creating those words as part of a powerful narrative that just simply becomes part of our lexicon. So, so you're, you're, you're saying that obviously using the word Mbongi in, in relation to a, a think tank inspires or conjures up in the mind um, looking for solutions, but with an African perspective rather than just a think tank in, in general, which could incorporate importing external uh, non-traditional centered solutions into um our, our solution basically i see yes yes exactly because the mere mention of the term from its linguistic and cultural background is already going to sort of direct the mindset flow of the people who are trying to um facilitate this so that an African thought pattern construction or with the outcomes that we have talked about before won't be off the table. Mm. So therefore we can pull other resources. So even if we're talking about, okay, well, let's do some interdisciplinary uh, components, um, you know, whatever the subject, you know, do we have rich background, text, or we'll bring in various people from different perspectives. We are defining and shaping what we're doing based upon a concept that was us or that is us. See, like, was us is saying that we had concepts as African peoples, as Bantu peoples in the past. Mm. We want to revive those, modify those, and apply those for use today. So was refers to that which had had a past, saying that it is us is speaking present tense that in fact the present tense means that we are using what was in the past today so is and was can apply to us because everything should be on a continuum see if we said just was 
something was an embangi in the past, then we're only referencing the parameter of it and the scope of it, perhaps based upon a limited context. Not that it's not important, it is. It, it forms the base of what we're talking about today, but we're look, looking at it in its past context. But when we can take the past, pull from the past, expand it, then the past now is a resource for now. And now, as a resource, is a present day tool. These are ideas that are important, that keep the continuum going about where we were, where we are, and where we're going. Past, present, and future, using the genius of our past as resources and references for our daily activities right now. And that is something that in some ways has been broken by slavery, colonialism, and by our own inabilities sometimes to reach out to one another. So right now, you and I are communicating across oceans. We don't live in the same space. But we're using modern day tools right now, video conferencing, Skype, to communicate, but we're referencing our conceptualization of a model for interface in discussion of our ideas based upon and looking at our history through linguistics, through a concept articulated through linguistics in Bangi to talk about a physical entity and activity and engagement that we can move forward on. By the way, let me say one, one more thing and I'd like to get your comments. Okay. Notice that as we're talking about Mbangi, I mentioned that Mbangi, you know, in the way that, um, you know, Dr. Fukial had sort of dealt with it from the political slant, the organization of a community based upon, you know, its political inner workings, both was epitomized by the philosophy of interaction as well as a physical place for that interaction. Mm. So notice as we're talking, we're talking about the conceptualization of what the Mbangi should entail from its philosophical standpoint, which is non-physical. But at the same time, if we're conceptualizing that people are getting together with the notion of uh, discussing ideas, interfacing, bringing people together around the discussion of a subject who have different backgrounds and therefore it's interdisciplinary, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, sort of an African thought process with related outcomes then we're actually talking about creating an engagement or an activity that both will be physical but philosophical at the same time. So both in the same space, the physical and the philosophical, translating ideas into simultaneous action. Mm -hmm. That would be one of the um, great benefits of it, and also challenges, you know, um, especially in the Pan-African setting. Um, if, say just for instance, if there were um, a number of people from certain countries who were to hold an embangi, if that could be the phrase, and try to resolve a, a, an issue, provide a, a solution, for a country where no one is represented um, in that embangi, um, can they 
accurately assess, deduce, and um, provide a resolution for the issue? Are they, is it going to be objective enough to utilize um, all the um, data? Oh, hold on a second. Are you able to see my picture? Not yet. Okay. Uh, it's showing online. I think it's um. It might be yours, but but my, my mine's fine over here. Okay, we, we you can see mine clearly, right? Yeah, yeah, I can see yours. I can see yours. Okay. So um, uh, what was that? I think um. I see, I see, I see the benefits, and I see, uh, or I don't see. I, I'm, I wonder if um, an Mbangi in a Pan African sense, where not every, say, non-nationals from a country that is being discussed uh, would be a a problem, a hindrance, uh, or is it possible just to apply? In Bangui, across um, different regions and countries, even though the people uh, may not necessarily exist there, is the objectivity uh, going to be, uh, you know, well-rounded and well-founded and well well discussed? What, what do you think? Again, I think that you know the concept of an Mbangi can take shape in many forms so these questions that you're asking about the representation between countries representatives would have to reach out to one another but the whole idea is the objective of the environment so it might take different forms and shape but the objective is what we're trying to have as the thing that's met so that's what I'm saying is, is the, the structure is flexible. The ideas and concepts are the things that we're trying to give modification to uh, so that we can move forward in general. You know, mm -hmm. the success of each Mbangi, we might not be able to measure each, each success level uh, you know, against one another. You might have to have many Mbangis to move certain discussions along. Just like, for example, some of our conversations. Some may be short, some may be long. Should we say that a short discussion was less productive than a longer conversation? No, because in fact, A longer conversation may have actually had less content to it, though the dialogue was long. Mm. See, we may have had to have had a long dialogue in order to uncover some points during that discussion that were sort of aha moments, you know, where we reached uh, some ideas that we hadn't thought about before that we thought maybe were profound that maybe we need to write down that moves us ahead. But maybe it took a long conversation just to reach some levels of consensus or to even redefine with, with clarity what we were talking about. But then in shorter conversations, maybe we could um, reach the meat of what we needed to talk about more quickly. So Mbangis have to be, I think, very flexible. It's the idea and the objectives that we need to try to figure out have we been able to reach them. So it'll just take, it'll just take different shapes. Okay. And, um, okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I think now, I'm trying to envisage a situation where this takes full uh, foothold across the continent and the various um, suggestions of various embongies being held. Um, you think it's too big. <laughs> I know, you I think know. It's too big. You think it's too big. <laughs> we, we think it's too big. 
hey, I, I think. In other words, we're trying to talk about Mbangi from a conceptual standpoint. And I'm saying the word is not a household word yet. I mean, in some cases on the internet, you'll see where people are talking about Mbangi as a think tank. Yeah. But what it, we're it, trying it, to do it, is we're it, trying it, to get the it, it, and it'll grow, it'll grow in size and magnitude uh, between high-level organizations. Right now, we're just trying to conceptualize it and spread the information and show other people that they already may be engaged in an embongi. That's what I wanted to sort of get to, that there are lots of embongis that are taking place. They may not have all of the ingredients that we talked about, but people are convening. Let's crystallize that. Let's show them that they are uh, in a position to more fully explore an embongi to empower what they're doing already, to give it a sort of a pan-African focus, even in the discussions. I hear what you're saying. I, I can't help but always, obviously imagine the um, um, such such uh, uh, more grander um, um, results um, down the line. But something uh, oh, yeah. uh, I also had a, an idea of Mbongi being incorporated into the educational system, not just as a Pan African think tank, but the think tank system and model being incorporated at an earlier stage into the educational system. So teaching is being delivered in that way and students are being inculcated in that system a mode of thinking, problem solving, analytical assessment and thinking from an earlier start, start standpoint because there's been, there's been the issue on the continent due to Eurocentric education, which is mainly or has been taught as just cramming. You know, learn, repeat, just almost like rote, rote knowledge. Um, that, that, that's been a system that has been prevalent on the continent, uh, so to speak. So perhaps imbibing Mbongi into the educational system from an early stage could now unleash a, more of, a, of, of that capacity go, going forward in, in all facets and walks of life. I agree. See, I want to show you something right here. I want, I want to make a comment. Okay. See, I want to show you, I want to underscore the point that you just made. Okay. We're talking about Dr. Fukuyao, yep. the uh, Congolese political thinker, yeah. who sort of, I think, kind of introduced in terms of vocabulary through his book, Mbangi, the notion of the Mbangi again as being a community parliament and a way to organize villages in an African context politically. All right, then Dr. Hilliard, who's an African-American scholar, educator, takes the term from Dr. Fukuyao. By, by the way, Dr. Fukuyao didn't create the term. He simply uses the term from a language perspective and sort of puts the slant on it regarding political development. But in the ancient times, the Mbangi did crystallize the notion of conflict resolution or a community trying to build consensus. So as you can see, various people are taking the term and are trying to give it bends and projections and new ad adaptabilities. So if we go back to, again, just the meaning of the word in the Kikongo language, a house without room, the mere fact that we are referencing a word from one of our many languages to talk about a metaphor that gives rise to a philosophy 
the mere fact that we are talking about a reference means that we're thinking from the standpoint of our narrative. Now, you made a connection in discussing in Bongi in which you said, well, why not take the concept of Mbangi and let's talk about putting it in the schools at early ages where we can get students to, you know, communicate with each other, to deal with critical thinking, to deal with interactive dialogue, to build consensus. See, that's important. That's another adaptation and incorporation of Mbangi. But when you start referencing your own cultural and cultural linguistic um, referencing, you begin to think within your own narrative. So that is a leap that you just made because you are already thinking Africa. You are already thinking in a pan-African way because that is the power of speaking from your own narrative and using your own cultural tools as a reference to do so. So we weren't even talking about the educational system, but because of our train of thought in our discussion right now, you were able to make another leap to say, why couldn't this be a model in some way that could be used in early ages among school children? And also, and you can repeat for me, it seems like you were making a critique of Western models of education in general. What was the critique that you made as you were speaking about the Mbangi in an educational sense? You made a critique about um, Western education. What was it? Well, the, the, critique, the, the critique was Western education as it pertained to African, Africa from colonization. Um, the the educational imperative was mainly to to just regurgitate uh, information. So just cram and regurgitate. So you weren't really having any kind of analytical thinking involved. It, it basically was based upon being able to just get the information and regurgitate it. No, and the questioning and testing and examinations were also aligned to that um, school of thought. So. There has been no kind of critical analysis and thinking uh, factored into the educational system, which has partly contributed to um, our state of lack of development today. And this was intentional by the colonialists at the time. So now a lot of countries are discussing, some are just implementing, but a lot are discussing ways to now break away from that, in, in essence, decolonize the educational system. And I just thought now that Mbangi would be a perfect way to have a system that is pan-African in perspective to now incorporate into the school systems across the board to allow students to now start interacting with each other in that way, also thinking of their uh, larger uh, um, African family or groups across um, the continent and interacting that way as well, coming together in different types of forum and exchanging ideas. You see, when you use tools from your own cultural heritage and legacy, you then began to speak within your own narrative, but you are able to make a critique on other people's narratives that you see or other people's narratives that you come in contact with or in conflict with. So therefore you could make a critique that you know the Western education or colonial model onto African people discourage independent thinking, discourage critical analysis, but was only about just simply repeating what was told to you without critique or analysis. You can see the fallacy in that because once we're using tools of reference from our own culture, we create our own narrative 
and we're able to see the narrative that we want to project, and then we can always make a comparison uh, and critique uh, about how our narrative is good for us or bad for us in comparison to other narratives that we are exposed to. See how that works? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's exactly how that works. Um, I just, um, I just, I just wish um, it was a lot more. Well, I'm, I'm glad we're discussing it and and brainstorming as to how you know Mbangi can be brought more into the mainstream um, as as owning the concept of Mbangi uh, as as a think tank and incorporate incorporating it as our narrative on, into our everyday lexicon. I think I think it's important because again, it will now be something that we own, not saying that we have borrowed this concept, a concept of of um, uh, of intellectual capacity improvement again from another civilization or culture. This is one that we have uh, we originated, and we have um, obviously progressed or modified now. Uh, in the modern day, to suit our needs or deficiencies, um, as we see fit, I think I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. You um, in, in keeping with our subject, you asked me before the show started. You said, um, "Is Mbangi, you know, keeps my healing word?" Yeah. And I said, no, not to my knowledge, um, you know, regarding the word or the concept of it being in the language as a think tank. And then we talked about, you know, Mbangi being a um, Kikongo word. But let me say this, Kikongo is a, is a Bantu language. So the structure of the word Mbangi is uh, very similar to, you know, the structure of many words in Kiswahili or more progressively, uh, Kimija Kanda. Now, I want to mention something along this line about, um, about, you know, words being within certain languages. You see, you asked me was, Mbangi uh, in Kiswahili, I'm going to say no, I haven't seen the word in Kiswahili. I certainly haven't seen the word Mbangi in Kiswahili as being, you know, a, a think tank. But I think that the word could be directly imported into Kiswahili um, as a new loan word from thanks to Kikongo that I think the word can just be put into Kiswahili as a as a long word. You know, I don't know the proper procedure. I guess it just has to be by consensus mm -hmm. that uh, you know we would incorporate a new a new uh, vocabulary word into um, Swahili coming from um, Kikongo. But again, as we've talked about before, Kiswahili or Kimija Kanda is uh, a language that's comprised of at least 10 different uh, Bantu languages in general, particularly as we know the nine coastal uh, dialect variations of uh, stretching from Somalia down to uh, Mozambique that originally created the Kimija Kanda language with its adaptability to incorporate uh, loan words into it to expand the richness and expanse of its, of its lexicon. So in saying that, I wanted to just mention, for example, in Kiswahili, have you ever heard of the term doctari? Uh, I 
I've heard I've heard of it. Funny enough, in, a, in the terms of a of a medication, dactarin. But uh, I don't know if it has any kind of similarities. But dactarin, no, I haven't heard of that. Yes, but you, but but in Grangley, you already know what that means, and you've heard it before. Now let me let me show you. Let's play a word game here, so that I can try to make my point. Okay, dactari. Spelled D A K T A R I is really a sort of um, Africanized or Bantuicized way of pronouncing the word doctor. I see. So, doctor, let's go with D O K T O R, doctor. Doctor is a Germanic word for a physician. You know, doctor. But, you know, we've generally seen the spellings in English of D O C T O R. Hmm. Now, doctor in the so called Western uh, European context has been generally portrayed as a person wearing a white coat that. You know, it was a lab coat or a physician sticks out like that with a stethoscope. And that became the idea of a doctor, right? You know, in terms of imagery, right? Yeah. So in, in Kiswahili, because of the, I think the dynamic structure of the language could take the, the term and word doctor and then make it, you know, Swahiliatized by saying Daktari. In fact, there was a TV program, a 1960s TV program uh, in the United States called Daktari. And it was about a, um, a veterinarian who uh, worked uh, to treat uh, sick and injured animals in a uh, you know, sort of a, a medical compound in uh, in East Africa. And the program was called Doctari. Yeah. So anytime someone says Doctari, they were talking about generally uh, a medical doctor, but some people have expanded it to mean just a person who may be a doctor in other fields other than just medicine, but, but generally a doctor regarding some type of uh, medicine. Now, in Swahili, also, you have a word, nganga, M-G-A-N-G-A, -A, nganga. But the word nganga is, um, you know, a word, a Bantu word, certainly, that meant a, um, you know, a traditional healer, but has come to mean also a physician. Well, as We've elevated the term Nganga to mean a healer, a traditional healer, to a physician. Now we have two words that are synonyms in the language that, that are, you know, elevated to the same level. Doctari, mm -hmm. which is a loan word, meaning a doctor or a physician, and the word Nganga. So all we have to do is to emphasize the word Nganga, perhaps over Daktari, even though both of them, uh, you know, mean the same, but we recognize Nganga certainly as Bantu, and we may recognize Daktari as Bantu aside, taking a long word from another language and adding to our synonym. See what I mean? So therefore, we use the dynamics of the language as a beacon to expand uh, the lexicon, but we can also expand it from our framework also and to emphasize its Bantu vocabulary in that context. I thought, oh, also the word Nganga had to do with a person uh, who was an herbalist. Oh, hello, Baruti. I think your volume has gone quite low with your microphone. It's still a bit low, just a bit thinny. 
Perhaps if you move around your mic, it might come back up. Pardon the, um, let's have a look whilst I wait. No, not right yet. Still quite thin and low. I was you getting that on. Um, no, I can still, I can hear you, but it's just still a bit thin. It, the volume just gone low. They come back up and project. Okay, go ahead. Okay. But, um, ah, it's back. Sorry, okay. Sorry. okay. But I wanted to just kind of mention that because it's always about, you know, speaking from our own our own narrative. Um, you know, as we expand, you know, these these ideas. Um, now in keeping with this about the, the words in uh in, in, in languages. Okay, so maybe there should be a push to incorporate the word Mbangi now as a Kiswahili word. There's no reason that it can be. So that's an idea also. So that as Kiswahili uh, continues to grow in people's minds mm -hmm. as a Pan-African language, then that means that we need more and more terms in the language it will be used and shared by everybody. Absolutely. So maybe we should start thinking of Mbangi as now a Kiswahili long word document as having emanated from Kikongo. Therefore, we're giving Kikongo credit for producing the word Mbangi, and we would now use the word Mbangi if it could be, you know, thought of by consensus as a new vocabulary word within the within the language of Kiswahili or Kimija Kanda. Um, I think these are ideas that we need to, you know, foster forward. Um, also, let me say this. You know, we talked about Mbangi as generally just a, a think tank. And we have, in our conversation, have been layering the structure and concept and context of Mbangi. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that, you know, it would be very important for Mbangis to be um, interdisciplinary. You mentioned that uh, the notion of, of having critical thought and exchange and dialogue introduced to um, children at early ages in terms of their communication with each other and their intellectual framework about the discussion of ideas and problem solving is an important idea that they need to be exposed to within the structure and context and reference of an embody. See how we're layering the, the constructs of the Mbangi uh, from what Dr. Head had talked about, from what Dr. Fukia had talked about, from his earliest uh, definitions of a house, you know, without, without rooms. So this is the kind of thing that we're doing. Now look at the venue in which we're talking. We are engaged in analysis problem solving, interactive uh, discussion, um, perhaps interdisciplinary too. I'm Um, your, your audio is going to get get a little bit, Rosie. 
has gone very low again. Now it's the same. Um, perhaps it'll come back again. Uh, maybe just keep. Still, it sounds like it's, it's still low. But but keep 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 talking here. Okay. Where, where did I, I start? I was just trying to measure. I think we're talking about the inter interdisciplinary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All of that makes for an interdisciplinary discussion as well. So we might have to expand the term interdisciplinary to not just mean the subject matter might be different, but different perspectives, different ethnic backgrounds, different um, social cultural backgrounds, um, different experiences. These would also become part of the fabric of an interdisciplinary discussion. And what we're doing now is we're um, we're engaged in a type of layering for the Mbangi as we seek to try to make sure that the term itself becomes a household word that can be used by us in large to small groups, okay? Now, um, Notice right now we are communicating by by Skype, okay, mm -hmm. which is a video conferencing type type tool. Okay, this becomes important because now maybe we can try to use the fact of our communicating electronically or via internet as a component of an embargo and this is a kind of the thought that I that I had about this there are a lot of conversations that are happening on YouTube you would agree or via Skype right yes yeah. okay so but sometimes in our discussion of ideas you know just in general they might not be crystallized with the outcome effect that you and I are engaging in, okay? So the Mbangi is going to take on the, the structure of people, plural, who are engaged in ideas of conversation about different subjects in which they're interfacing. Um, they're trying to hopefully problem solve, give critical analysis, respect um, different people's points of view, um, with the notion of trying to build consensus, to build teamwork. Okay, now there might be a lot of um, discussions going on amongst our people on different subjects, but they don't have those goals in mind. They're just talking, or maybe they're arguing, or they're fighting, they have no end goals. Mm. Okay, so what we're Structure. trying to do is we're trying to crystallize the outcome of an embargo. See, they are already engaged in a structure that could be an embargo, but may not be. In other words, just because someone is talking may not be an embargo. We may need to have all the things that you are talking about interdisciplinary uh, structures, building consensus, teamwork, critical analysis, uh, interactive dialogue. Okay? So a lot of the conversations that are already happening via YouTube, via other uh, means of um, communication may need to be enhanced around the embargo. This would be, I think, an important uh, piece that we could put out to others that what they're doing already to communicate by way of video conferencing, Skype, Google Hangout, other means of communication is good, 
but let's focus it in with a result on conflict resolution, building consensus, teamwork, so that it gives layer and depth to the discussions that they're having. Now, a part of building ideas is also to crystallize terminology so that when someone mentions a word, someone has a context and a concept of what is being said. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's a thought I had, and I wanted you to see what you thought about this. You remember I told you that in um, Kimi Jakanda that sometimes adding a U in front of a word uh, means sometimes it means the condition of, sometimes it can mean the territory of, the condition of, the perspective of, the whole circumstances of. Let me give you an example. The word moja, that is somewhat of a common Kiswahili uh, word, means one, O-N-E, the, num the number one. Mm. But when we put a U in front of moja, it becomes umoja. Well, remember that one of the um, principles of Kwanzaa is Umoja, which means unity. Now, check this out. Moja, M-O-J-A, means one, like in singularity or one person. Okay. But if you put a U in front of it, the condition of the circumstances of one, um, the perspective of one, means the context of oneness. Oneness has to do with unity or the coming together of all into one. Now, suppose that we were to take that same idea and play around with the, with the word Mbangi. As we said, actually, Mbangi could actually be directly um, imported into Kiswahili or Kimi Jakanda in the structure that it is right now. Now, in terms of applying this U concept, suppose that we took the M off of Mbangi and, and replaced the M with a U and made the term Ubangi. Now, again, if Mbangi meant, you know, a kind of a, a kind of a think tank, an actual noun as a as a think tank itself, maybe maybe the term Ubangi could be the process of an intellectual group exchange. The mm. process of that. Or simply collective interface. So, in fact, we could actually craft a new vocabulary word into Kiswahili by dropping the M on Mbangi and making it Ubangi. And then the next time when someone sees the word Ubangi, they know that that means collective interface as in the activity of people getting together to discuss ideas from the framework, as you said, of critical analysis, dialogue, uh, building teamwork that can be applied in various arenas and activities. One being application to how school children interface with one another, so that they build their critical thinking skills, the interactive dialogue. It could be an application to how countries talk to one another between representatives. It could be just basic organizations within an organization or between organizations, the process under which they, they're getting together. Mm. Or it could just be you and me, a small group of people, 
dealing with collective interface and the noun actual physical crystallization of that is an mbangi which would be the actual think tank that we could see feel and touch how about that i think that, that, that's, that's a brilliant um a brilliant injection um to to think about the appropriation of it into kiswahili um and the manipulation of of the prefix as well i think that fits very well within it um i think that should be a consideration made um not just even for the mbongi it sounds like for for a, a lot more other words words that are of benefit for progressive thinking and um and uh ones that would would lead to implementation of new fields of thought that exist currently but are not in within Kiswahili should be considered. I, I think that, that this has come about as well from an Mbongi as we're having right now. We've thought about the educational system and this just now from, from thinking about and propose a solution or uh, alternatives. Um, and I think that that's a very good one. I do think that's a very good one. I, we are going to be, it seems, forging ahead with Kiswahili being a unified language across the continent or at least proto-Africa. And that being the case, then we have to make sure that the language is now fit for purpose for uh, the, pe the people, people who are going to be using it in order to empower them to be able to have the words and descriptives for uh incorporating critical thinking incorporating uh, analytical uh, assessment and um and having interfaces within um spaces across distances with one another and i think um that, that is a welcome development for sure um i don't know what the process would be for i guess appropriation of new words i know sometimes that happens over time um just through the natural course of of things but being that this is going to be rolled out into different educational systems they can use an mbangi system to start to incorporate their own regional words into um kiswahili if it's going to be the language adopted itself i can imagine in west africa where um pigeon english is spoken a lot amongst the pigeon or English speaking countries. There might be some words there that are as popular and, and are a benefit. They can think to include that into the, the language as well, taking the same kind of concept you just described. So, um, you know, I, I like that very much. I mean, um, just going back to the word um, Nganga, actually, I found out that. Even though the word Nganga is now a Kiswahili term for an herbalist and a traditional healer slash physician now, but in many other related Bantu languages and languages that are somewhat regional to where Kiswahili is spoken, Kiswahili, in fact, absorbed the word nganga from another form in which the sound didn't have the m on it but it had an n so that we spell uh, the n g a n g a nganga but when it was absorbed into swahili the n was changed to an m and now it's nganga oh, but see. it's really the same same work. Many people would say, okay, with the, the prominence and popularity of Kiswahili, it's okay, what's the term for a doctor? Then someone say, um, someone might say, okay, doctari, I hear that word. And someone might say, oh, well, that sounds too much like the word doctor. Don't they have any more synonyms? So yeah, we've got plenty of them. Here's one. How about the word Nganga? And someone says, where does that word originate from? Is it an original Kimi Jakanda word? 
someone may do research and say, no, not really. It came from some other languages, but they use Nganga. But some say, ah, it's basically about the same thing. What's the difference in putting an M versus an N? Mm. So we can just use Nganga. See, this is the, the power of being able to absorb loan words from an African base into a language like Kiswahili, where we not only expand the lexicon, but we expand the ability for us to tell our narrative about the wideness and the connection of us in earlier times. And that the language becomes a vehicle for lots of people to show ownership in the language in much the same way as in an earlier show um you know we talked about a word uh for teacher and robo you were saying it was the word uyono right. and i was saying simply replace the the o with an m and you can actually make that a key swahili word um uyono as a teacher and that if someone did the research who was, um, say, a robo-linguistic historian, and they found that the new word in Kiswahili was Nyono, they would trace it back to its original parent structure in robo as being Oyono. And immediately, if we took more robo words, and converted them into Kiswahili, either with minor modifications or even direct, straight loan uh, uh, transfers, um, it would give people in that language of Robo, which is your ethnic group, ownership in the Kiswahili that can be reduplicated by other people who spoke other languages as we attempt to use Kiswahili on a broad level. By the way, also, in the uh, discussion I had with you about the word um, umoja, uh, umoja mm -hmm. uh, yes, the word umoja in Kiswahili is, is unity, that, that is true, but because of the popularity of Kwanzaa as being, you know, an African American configured Pan African uh, holiday. The fact that Kwanzaa is articulated in Kiswahili means that that is a connector of the language to the diaspora as well. So that, in fact, as Kiswahili would be used uh, more and more and more, it does not exclude the diaspora itself. In fact, the diaspora continuing to use Kiswahili to, to um, participate in Kwanzaa automatically connects the diaspora, at least in the United States, to, in a parallel way, the ongoing use of Kiki Swahili across the continent so that as Kiki Swahili moves outside of the space of the East African community, EAC, into wider circles of use, South Africa, East Africa, again, more expandedly, Central Africa, and hopefully eventually West Africa, the diaspora is not um, left out with the ability for the diaspora to, in fact, begin to insert itself into the expansion and use of the language. There are so many words uh, that are of an African nature in the lexicon of the United States. Just for example, 
You've heard of yams, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, it comes from a, a word that was in the Nigeria Cameroon area, from one of the languages in the area, more so Cameroon. Your volume, volume is going to get in a little bit pretty. Okay. Um, I think I got that bit. That, uh, it's a Cameroonian word uh, from a culture there in Yami. Yes. Okay, where, where the word yam comes from. Yes. Okay. So, in fact, uh, you know, taking people's words and nature. I'm just trying to hear you clearly. I'm sure it'll come back again. All the same. No, um, I'm sure it'll come back in a second, but um, um, wow, well, I'm just um, I'm I'm just listening, and the uh, the conversation as as the way it's it's taken, its course, uh, it's much more evident now that um, the the term, the idea, the concept of mbongi is really incorporated into our everyday lexicon, um, both home and away, um, and adopted in whichever uh, format or iteration um, that would suit or see fit that can be incorporated, and other words as well. Um, I think we should incorporate it into our businesses, as I said, hair salons, anywhere there is community and especially and most particularly into the educational system. Um, this will help obviously improve and instill analytical thinking, um, acute uh, problem solving skills, and also help us to have a new younger generation of analytical thinkers to help uh, bring about change, drastic change, uh, which has been largely non-existent due to uh, colonial education instilled by a colonialist past um, to get rid of this rote knowledge system and also to create more Pan-African pan think tanks. Pan-African think tank in the sense that um, we're approaching problem solving from a more holistic, inclusive and, um, and a consensus driven uh, base for which we can all uh, break down issues and problems um, across the board, not depending on where we're from, but depending on these expertise, experiences, uh, and conglomerate um, um, setting that we can all put our minds to things and bring about this change and propose it or uh, just you know, carry it out as, as, as we see fit, not necessarily having to rely on government structures, uh, they can be, you can act as consultant, I mean, a Pan-African think tank can act as a consultant to larger bodies or still resolve for larger bodies um, in, in, in different ways and allow for flexibility uh, and adaptation um, in bringing about this change. Um, I, I think it's a much needed development that we, we should be looking forward to and those in positions of, of authority or, or government um, status should be able to be looking at this and considering this to try to work to bring in bring in it about um, because it do, does have cultural imperatives. It is our narrative. It is one that we can uh, utilize um, as being from our own selves and our own history. So owning the narrative obviously have a bigger uh, implication on our 
on the outcomes and also on longevity. Um, the, the, those are my thoughts on it, and it's very welcome. I, I, I do, I do have a consensus towards that. Um, this this demystifies the concept, Western concept, I think, of think tanks um, being this probably more rigid body of experts just being in a setting trying to produce um, um, uh, you know, a, a solution for a problem and doing it in more modular uh, ways, uh, modular uh, uh, fashions. But this Mbongi is a more traditional centered way, African centered way, where it's more flexible, more adaptable, it's more malleable, done over vast distances with people who can uh, who have the African narrative interests at heart in trying to bring about solutions and not necessarily restricted to particular disciplines or regions and applying more of a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary focus to have a holistic view of a solution. That's what I think. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Clearly, it's still a bit low, but but it's 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 okay. okay. Yeah. Right. I got I got four points I want to make. Okay, go ahead. All right. Why is the term? Why is the letter I used in front of K? Why is I um I'll just repeat in case people don't hear the question was why is I used in front of pad and phone, as in the, the products iPhone and iPad. Uh I believe it's intelligent. It's a word intelligent. I may be wrong actually. I remember asking that, being asked that question a while ago. I think it's intelligent phone or intelligent pad. Or could be used for internet things. Okay. Or sometimes a better use uh, can be used to be electronic. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, let's, um, let's say my, my thought that I, I guess I could be done, I thought it was probably different, but nevertheless, I thought about what if we had to find internet based on the call it. I, all I, Apple B. Oh, sorry, you know, would you be able to play around with the microphone just in case? Because it is quite um, low. Whilst I just put a snack in my mouth. Mm -hmm. So the same. No, no, not yet. Still low. Yeah, it's still low. Oh, yeah, it's back. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It's back. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so. I was thinking that if we used a term like Ebongi, small i, and then capital B O N G I, maybe maybe we could coin the notion of using an I in you know in a way in which we talk about internet internet based. You know, I mean, it's just just some ideas to play around with. But let's say that eventually um, a term was coined. Like Ebongi using the I in a Bantu sense, 
Um, of course, we're, we're talking about internet, but in terms of pronunciation, pronounced like two two e's. Okay, so I know that people use the word iPad to see the word i, but if we we spelled it with a small i in a capital B O N G I, if we said ebongi, maybe we could uh, coin a concept of an internet-based um, think tank. We're engaging in that right now, that you and I would be engaged in an ebongi. See, this would be a practical way in which our people are already uh, communicating with one another. We just have to fine tune it so that we're engaged in these kinds of conversations by way of Skype, uh, YouTube, uh, Google Hangout, and other means of communication when we're trying to you know, think amongst ourselves, either for a broadcast or just, you know, to communicate that we're participating in Ebonki. But if we're actually doing one that's not internet based, then maybe it's just an Ebonki. But we'll have to create these kinds of terminologies. I wanted to throw that out because that might be a contribution. You know, so I would say, a contribution first of advocating that the word Mbangi be at least made a part of the lexicon of, um, of Kiswahili. And then um, from there, maybe we could use a refashion of the word Ubangi to mean a collective interface as a new noun. And then maybe if somebody wanted to play around with the notion of putting an I, dropping the M and putting an I and saying Ibangi or, or writing it as a small I, capital B, O-N-G-I, then we would coin uh, an idea of an internet-based conversation around Pan-African development and thoughts. These are just ideas for people to think about. But what we're trying to do with our conversation today is to put ideas forth that can be used as resources, conceptual resources for to move people forward. Now, having said that, what I'd like for us to do, even though I know that this is uh, this program is, is being broadcast, but I want us to write down, if you have a piece of paper and a pen, mm -hmm. I want us to write down 10, things that we thought that Mbangi should have. It can include the kinds of stuff that we saw from, um, you know, Dr. Hilliard's uh, presentation in the video clip, plus some of the other things that you were talking about regarding, you know, critical analysis. Uh, when I'm also, when I mentioned things like, you know, interdisciplinary, um, perspective let's let's put together 10 and we would have just 10 ideas that we were written down but also because we're recording this program 10 ideas of constructs that Mbangi can have so that anybody on the listening audience they decided to fine tune and Mbangi if they wanted to have it or because People are using um, Skype and Google Hangout all the time. If they want to say, hey, let's get together. And um, then we hear a program which a couple of guys were talking about in Ebongi. They can explore that in terms of an internet based discussion. So let's see if we can come up with just 10, 10 things that we had mentioned that we think are important as constructs of an Ebongi. And of course, an Ebongi too, um, you know, because an Ebongi would simply just be an internet based version of what would happen at an actual um, face to face conference. Okay. All right, let's try that. Uh, one of the principles of first concept. Um, hmm. 
Can we get to 10? Good try. For parties to um, I guess the experiences or d the disciplines should be um, would you say complementary or or diverse? I guess diversity in um, well, well, interdisciplinary would cover that. Yeah. Okay. Interdisciplinary um, focus and constituency. The reason that that would cover that is because the interdisciplinary would assume that people are coming from various backgrounds, either academically or their profession. Or where they live, or their experiences, or their ethnic orientation. Okay. All right. So, so that would cover a wide, a wide branch of differences that would all be coming to the table at one time. Okay. Then I would say uh, aim. Would be an aim or a goal. Okay. So so make it goal oriented. Yes. Okay. Um, how about again the notion of consensus building? Yes. Is consensus building the same thing as team building? Um. No, I'd, I'd say team building could be separate. Consensus okay. would, yeah, team building could, could be separate. Consensus would be just uh, trying to get to the to the final, um, you know, I guess get, getting to a unified conclusion, um, but not necessarily being a team building effort in that context. So team building could be separate. Team building is part of it, yes. You, you mentioned you mentioned originally um, critical analysis. Yes. Okay. okay. We're halfway. What what was that last one? I said, I said we're, we're halfway. Interdisciplinary okay. focus, you know, an aim or a goal. Number two, number three, consensus. Number four, team building. Number five, critical analysis. So, okay, um, um, respect of of all views. Yes. Respect of all views. Respect of all constituent views. Yes. Yes, that also ties into being tolerant and uh, open. Um, open minded. How about open mindedness and thinking outside the box? Yes. Now, is open mindedness the same as thinking outside the box, or are those two different ones? They're different. All right. Then were those two important to you? Thinking outside the box and open mindedness? Yes, yes. Man, this is thinking outside the box. Okay. I would say uh, utilization of a wide range of sources or data or, um, yeah, I would say. Utilization, obtaining, the sourcing of uh, of data, uh, both so and in terms. Research. Sorry. More research. Re research or resource. Um. 
Well, those two different things. Like research would mean if you're fact checking, you're investigating. Now, re, re, what do you mean by resource? A resource, I mean data. The data you you, you pull upon um, from all your disciplines. The data you pull upon, I guess the the validity, the depth, the um, amount of data, uh, quality of data. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about resource data, where, where you get where you get your source information from, or how you get your source information. All right, so we'll put that together in research and resource data. Yeah. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if we can think of uh, one more that we haven't sort of dealt with. Um, oh, uh, oh, here's one good one problem solving. Yes. Yes, that'd be good. Okay, now, so therefore, the Mbangi would comprise strategies to achieve, to achieve and facilitate this. So the, the goal of the Mbangi would be to, um, comprise strategies to um, achieve and facilitate all of these aspects and parameters. Indeed. Okay, so therefore, it doesn't matter if two people are talking, three people are talking, organizations are communicating for whatever the discussions they want to have, they want to have at least these 10. Now, look, people can take these 10, subdivide them, or add more to it. But if if at all points in which we're engaging in an bongi, if people have these ideas in mind, interdisciplinary focus, meaning a level of diversity that can be drawn upon. Mm -hmm. Let me just say something about that anyway. I don't want people to leave with the impression from my vantage point that it means that if you're engaged in a bongi, that you have to necessarily have people talking from different per se, or that they have to be from different countries, or they have to be living in different uh, parts of the world right now, or they have to uh, be involved in, in different uh, professions. I mean, they could be, and that's great. Hmm. But what I mean is seeking out the differences in what people bring to the table, even if they're living in the same city or even if they are in similar professions. But everybody is going to bring something different to the table and seeking out the notion that people are bringing different strengths and different gifts and resources to add to the intellectual texture and richness of the engagement, okay? So therefore, the interdisciplinary focus could be expanded beyond the notion that people are coming from different academic backgrounds, okay? That's one. And then the second was to make sure that their goal is goal-orientated so that, you know, we're discussing a particular problem, discussing a particular topic, I and mean, we want to answer whatever particular questions so that everybody knows what the focus is. 
consensus building is the third. Team building is the fourth. Critical analysis is the fifth. Respect of all constituent views is the sixth. Creating a spirit of open-mindedness or facilitating that is the uh, seventh. Encouraging members to think outside the box in, in whatever the discussion is regarding parameters for solving a problem or for in-depth discussion. Uh, and I, I, th I think another, I guess, synonym or euphemism for that would be adaptability, for that open um, thinking outside the box, adaptability. But yeah, please carry on. Okay, adaptability. Hmm. Okay, so you see how so we see how we're adding layers because hmm. now thinking outside the box then becomes a sort of a, a, a parallel or a synonym for adaptability that people can sort of stretch in their mind what that may mean in the context of that particular customized discussion yeah then the ninth one is research and resource data now some people might might mean that they have actually decided to read certain books before having a discussion and they convene around certain materials that they've all perused. Or it could be where right on the spot, if someone were dealing with a Ibangi, if we want to coin that term as an internet-based, um, you know, Pan-African type think tank, that maybe the computer resources are right there at everybody's disposal. And somebody might be able to look up some information on Google right there on the spot. So, so you know, internet tools, book tools, uh, all kinds of sourcing of data might be done prior to the Ibangi or might be right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. This might come underneath the whole idea about resource data. And then finally, number 10 is, is problem solving in general, which I think parallels in some ways the, the second component about um, facilitating the notion of being goal oriented. Mm. So, so from our broadcast today, we are trying to provide others with a, a concept model which they can just take what's already been done and expand on and, and fine tune it. And people can add more to this list. So in fact, today's broadcast has actually, I think, become an archived resource for others. That in fact, you and I have been participating in an Ibangi internet-based think tank or just the Mbangi in general and we certainly have been engaged in an Ubangi uh, as collective interface and now this program we broadcast it's an archive and accessed by others it becomes a resource for others to develop their own Ibangi, um, and they may use some of what we've talked about to help give layer and texture to what they're doing already in communicating, having, you know, video conferencing shows. So, in fact, somebody may actually pull from the 10 things that we were coming up with on the show that's based upon predecessor work, Dr. Fukuyao, uh, Dr. Asa here, and they may pull some ideas from that and may say, you know, problem solving as one of the outcomes is something that we need to do. So we, in fact, may be a reference and a resource for others. And, 
and that, 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 that would be a great success in itself, even if just one person were to pull this and to expand upon it wherever they may be with other groups. And with that being said, I think it's good to, to leave it there. Um, it's been great, great e uh, that we've had. <laughs> and um, I think I think this definitely sets the tone for um, hopefully uh, the process of of think tanks across the continent with the flexibility, adaptability, and the ubiquity of which it can be used and utilized uh, in the school system, in companies, communities, smaller groups, and people over distances like 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 we are and for people to use that to provide solutions and put them out there on places like social media for the usage and uh, implementation of all. Um, I think if a lot more people can get together to provide solutions rather than waiting on just governments and those in positions of uh, officialdom, that this can provide a lot more solutions, a lot more answers, a lot quicker for people to draw upon from a large database from people of, of a lot larger pool of interdisciplinary focus uh, who otherwise would not know of which ways to be able to get their points across because the solutions to all our problems lie within us and across the continent. We just have to get them out there and to be involved in our development as a whole. And I think that's a good message for us to leave for everyone. So, oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, so... I want to thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Baruti, for your points. And uh, for those watching, please watch again. There's some valid, good points uh, on the show. And to take the 10 points that we made and apply them to your to your discipline, wherever you might be, your, your field of work. Um, and hopefully help to, um, you know, inform others and inspire others and holding bongies and bongies and bongies, wherever you may be because we need the solutions and only ourselves are going to provide these solutions. So thank you again for watching. Please subscribe, like, uh, ask your questions or suggestions, and uh, we'll see you again shortly. Have a nice evening. See you. Thank you.